Businesses are struggling to deal with big city crime, and our next guest is on the front lines of the crisis. Junior restaurant owner Alan Rosen joins us now. Alan, thanks for being with us. You've got My a place pleasure. just around the corner yep. from here. Um, it's an area of New York people love to visit, but it feels like it's a heck of a lot grittier than it used to be and more dangerous. What's that been like for your business? Well, it hasn't affected my business financially okay. as much as emotionally. Hmm. I'm worried about my employees coming to and from work. Hmm. I'm obviously worried about our guests going to the theater, traveling around New York. And we also want to change the narrative of what's going on in New York, but we also want to change the reality. Yeah. And so I felt, you know, it prudent to speak out. Well, emotional becomes financial eventually, right? Because people don't need cheesecake. They no, and they don't need cheesecake. to go to restaurants and go to yeah. theater as often as we'd like them to. So if the if the story's not wonderful and this isn't the greatest city in the world anymore, right? It's it's going to take its toll. So I want to see that turn around. Can I talk about some of the financials um, on this show? We've talked a lot about inflation. Have you seen any easing of some of the input costs and labor costs? Yes. So I will tell you that on the food front, we've seen some easing from what happened during COVID, but not down to pre-COVID COVID levels. levels. So, for instance, cream cheese before COVID was, say, dollar forty a pound. It went up to three oh five, three twenty. Now it's down to two thirty. Mm -hmm. So it's still elevated, but you know. It's not, I don't think it's ever going back. I hate to break it down. Never going back. Uh-uh, not in my opinion. Can we talk a little bit more about the emotional aspect that you're talking about? Because I feel like the three of us live this every day here in New York City and just being around the corner from Times Square as well. To your point, Alan, people feel like they can't do the things they normally did. They can't ride the subway feeling comfortable. Um, and yet, while leaders hear us, they're doing nothing about it. You're, you're, you're accurate. You know, there was a freedom when I was growing up in New York mm. in my 20s, which is a long time ago, where I didn't think about all this stuff. I have children, you have children, you know, run, roaming around the city. And it gives them pause, and it gives me pause to let them take the subway yeah. after what happened yesterday in our subway system. Yeah. Someone push. was pushed in front of a train. A mm -hmm. uh, police officer was shot in Far Rockaway. Um, we, need, we need this to stop. And we need to, you know, I, I had a talk to the New York Post the other day. I actually said we need to refund the police, not defund the police. Right. We need to also support our law enforcement and, you know, in, a, in an emotional way and say, hey, thank you for doing what you're doing. Yeah. Not please don't do it. Alan, I, I don't think things are going to change in New York until the business community figures out that they've got to take the lead in helping to change policy. You're a business owner. You've talked about, you know, the need for business people to run for elected office. Is that, you're a busy guy, obviously. Is that something I, you'd consider I, doing? I, I am a busy guy, but there has been some talk. Um, I have been talked to and asked, and I might consider it. But I would need someone to tell me how to be a politician, because I talk way too honestly <laughs> and way too straight. Uh, you know, and I use salty language sometimes. But I really want think the city should be run more like a business. You hire the right people, mm. you get the questions asked, and as a CEO, you make the right decision for all of the people. But mm. a lot of like-minded individuals that would vote for somebody like yourself have actually left. They've gone for greener pastures to other states. And so you wonder about the voting pool here and the base and if they would buy what you're selling, because to a certain degree, some people like how it is here, mm. if you um, can believe it. I don't believe that, because since the article was published in the Post on mm. Monday that I that we're speaking about, um, I've had literally hundreds and hundreds of phone calls from employees, mm -hmm. from other business owners, mm -hmm. real estate you know owners in New York City, from all plumbers, you name it, saying thank you for speaking the truth because everyone feels it. I think there's just a stigma attached to speaking out like you're going to be the yeah, bad sure. person doing it. Yeah. Just quickly, you're living in the heart of the migrant crisis. It's not New York City alone. Every progressive city across this country is yeah. facing it. How has it impacted your business? It's impacted our business. Um, so there's a hotel over on 44th Street, and instead of being filled with visitors to our wonderful city, it's filled with migrants. Mm. Not doing them any good, staying in the center of Midtown, not mm -hmm. having a job, doesn't solve for anything. Um, having them there instead of tourists who are visiting our city, coming to breakfast or lunch or dinner in one of my restaurants, right. you know, it doesn't serve anybody. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's fairly widely acknowledged that this is a free-for-all that needs to change. Right. Alan, so good to have you on set. Thanks for being here and sharing what's going on. Thank you for listening.